Julia Vaslamalikum student. I'll continue my lecture on threat to biodiversity. Today I'm going to explain about the man and wildlife conflict. In man and wildlife conflict, yani yani human, human and wildlife conflict, there is an interaction. Interaction between wildlife and and a human and conflicts occur when there is a population increase and natural habitat shrinking then what happens both the wildlife and human are compete each other for the space and food so what happened to the biodiversity the threatened and endangered species are died and they are killed by the wildlife for so many purpose this is a picture of uh, animal which was killed for their skin. Second, there are another animal which was killed by human for their irony, for the medicine and extra. Okay, I'll show you the another pic. This is a pic of an animal called marmot, which is called Pea in Ladakhi. If you clearly see at the picture, look how people is feeding a marmot biscuit, which is the biggest threat to the ecosystem of Ladakh. They are wild animals, they manage their own. But this tourist feed this uh, marmot by giving biscuits. So, and second example is there's another bird which we call a brown-headed girl. The tourists again giving a biscuit to the birds in the Pengong Lake, which I think is a like biggest threat to our own Ladakh wildlife. So this is how wildlife and man conflicts create a problem to the biodiversity. Second point is pollution. As we know that pollution create problem in so many ways. I'll show you one pick. The first one is air pollution. Second one is water pollution and third one is oil spill. If you uh, see the first picture, the air pollution. This air pollution destroy the forest. Second is the water pollution. This water pollution destroy the fishes and aquatic animal. And in the water pollution, if you see the the waste coming out from the pipe is a hazardous waste, toxic waste, which is released by the industries and factory to the water, which leads to the disturbance of aquatic life. Third one, if you see that is a oil spill around the sea this destroy the coastal birds coastal animals and the plant diversity okay this is how we complete the threat to the biodiversity the second point is impact on the loss of biodiversity impact what happened when there's a threat to the biodiversity first one is ecological imbalance Any single organism is misses for, missed from the chain is disturb the ecological system. Second one is genetic erosion. As I told you that lost of species at genetic level will extinct forever. Now third is disturption in biological cycle. Biodiversity provide us to maintain the biogeochemical cycle. When there's a disturbance in the biodiversity, that is disturb whole biogeochemical cycle, which is necessary for everybody to exist on this life. Fourth one is aesthetic value, means beauty. As we all know that because of the biodiversity, because of the water, because of the grassland, because of the forest, the earth look beautiful. When these beauties are declining, this beauty is decreased, then the this uh, biodiversity is not look good. So this is loss of static value. Fifth one is soil erosion. When there's a deforestation, the soil is coming down, which we call a soil erosion. Likewise, in a slope area, the landslide occur frequently, which disturb the human and wildlife too. Sixth part is climate change. When there's change in the climate, because of the biodiversity, that leads to the change in the rainfall and temperature pattern of the particular region. The seventh part is unpredictable weather. 
जब बारिश होना होता है वहां बर्फ होना शुरू हो जाता है जहां बर्फ का टाइम होता है वहां पे बर्फ नहीं होता है सो दिस इज वॉट वी कैन से अनप्रिक्टेबल वेदर द लास्ट वन इज स्प्रेड ऑफ डिजीज गोड इज क्रिएट द बायोडाइवर्सिटी लाइक दैट दैट इट्स मेंटेन एवरीथिंग बैलेंस बट वेन ह्यूमन बींग इंटरफेयर इट्स चेंजेस सो दिस वाइल्ड एनिमल प्लांट्स एंड माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर कीपिंग द सिस्टम बैलेंस when they are disturbed they are responsible for the spread of diseases this is how we complete the impact of the loss of biodiversity threatened species i u c n that is international union for conservation of nature and natural resources why i uh, giving stress to written this iucn approbation is that every time there is a question on iucn as an objective part so please student please write down this abbreviation iucn iucn is an organization which is focus on the plants and animal in a endangered list so what iucn is doing iucn is publish a book which we call a red data book in this red data book iucn describe and give the list of the endangered species of plants and animal why they keep the red color keeping the red color for this data book is giving a alarming signal so that we are going to conserve this wild plants and animal if not conserve it will be extinct soon okay to come to the point threatened species स्पीशीज होती है थ्रेटन स्पीशीज थ्रेटन स्पीशीज वो स्पीशीज होते हैं जिसको अगर हम अभी से कंजर्व या प्रिजर्व ना करो तो इन फ्यूचर दैट मे बी बिकम रेयर क्रिटिकली इन डांजर और मे एक्सटिंग सो आई यू सी एन वट आई यू सी एन इज डेट दैट आई यू सी एन हैज कैटेगराइज दिस थ्रेटन स्पीशीज ऑफ फाइव ब्रॉड वेज दैट इज एक्सटिंग in danger critically in danger vulnerable and rare first one is extinct extinct species kaun si hoti hai the species whose last number of species are missed that extinct from the life, earth so that is what extinct species i'll show you the picture of a bird the first bird is the dodo bird first one is dodo bird and second is ping headed bird both this bird are already extinct from the earth now we are able to see this pic, uh, birds picture only either in a book or in museum endangered species the endangered species are those species whose number is reduced in a critical level if not preserve not conserve right now then this species may be uh, come under the extinct species for example this is a pic of a long billed indian vulture jo abhi in danger list mein hai second example is king fisher there are many but i just list as two names that is a long billed indian vulture and king fisher third one is critically endangered species are those species whose uh, population are in whose 80% population are decreasing decreasing in a 
three generations. For example, great Indian bastard. Great Indian bastard. This is a pick of the great Indian bastard, which is found in the Rajasthan. Now our fourth one is vulnerable. Vulnerable कौन सी species होती है? ये वो category of species होती है जिसका population is declining because of the over exploitation of the habitat. Okay, तो vulnerable species category में extinction होने की और endangered category category में जाने की stage पे नहीं है. They are abandoned. But if not conserved now, that will become in the endangered list. So example of vulnerable species are spotted deer, spotted deer, black bug, so spotted deer is found in the, in the, in so many national park of India and, but black bug is found in, again in the Rajasthan. So this is a vulnerable species whose population is decreasing but not in an alarming rate. So this is under the vulnerable category. Okay, the last one is a rare species. Rare species. Rare species are those species which are very rare in number but found in a restricted geographical area. These species are endemic. They are found in a localized area. For example, this is a pick of Ganga shark. This is an example of rare, but this is very rare species. If not conserved, they become rarer, but not extinct. They become rarer, but not extinct. So Ganga shark, is found in a fresh water and they are value for their oil. This is how we complete the threatened species. Okay, next is biodiversity conservation. Why it is necessary to conserve the biodiversity? Biological diversity conservation it is a process where we are going to preserve protect reserve and restoration of wild habitat along with the plants animal by human being to get a maximum benefit for the future generation and also preserve for the need of future generation which we call the sustainability this is uh, how the biodiversity conservation explain so how we are going to conserve the biodiversity it is of two types first one is in situ second one is ex situ conservation what do you mean by in situ conservation in in situ conservation means within the natural habitat अपने ही घर में When the conservation is within the natural habitat is called in situ conservation Within this in situ conservation we can find a national park sanctuaries and biosphere reserve It means in situ conservation in a natural habitat but marking the level Marking the point, you can say, by designated an area as a national park, sanctuaries, and biosphere reserve. Okay, under in situ conservation, there's a national park. National park hota kya hai? Kon si jaga hoti hai? So national park is designated by the government to protect the particular animal and plants, so that that uh, particular plants, either plants or animal, will be conserved in future. National Park में क्या नहीं होती है? Hunting, 
firewood collection? Construction? Etc. not allowed under national parks. Because national park is designated for conserved particular plants and animals. Look at this national park. The first one is Corbett National Park. The Corbett National Park is the first national park of India. Some of Purana. Some of first designated national park is Corbett National Park. That is in Uttar Pradesh. This Corbett National Park is famous for the conservation of particular species that is tiger. Second is Kaziranga National Park at Assam. That is famous for the rhino, one horn rhino. Okay, so the third one is Himis National Park, where you can find a majestic animal that is a snow leopard, which is found in our own Ladakh. This is how National Park is important and uh, have to preserve for the particular plant and animal. There are 106 national parks in India. Now second part is century. In India we have 515 number of centuries in India. What is century? Century is an area which is conserved and preserved for the wild animal only. Jahape National Park mein jo tha hunting, timber, collection was not allowed, but in century, collection of wood, fuel wood, timber collection, even ownership. Local ownership rights are also there. And uh, in the century, the area is not demarcated because we need a vast area. But national park is demarcated, the century is not demarcated. So this is how century is important for the conservation of animal also. So for example, Ghana bird sanctuary in Rajasthan. Second is coal desert. Changtang coal desert century. As we all know, ki coal desert century of Changtang me kya hota? Human settlement is there. Collection of firewood is allowed. Private ownership is also allowed. Ye tab tak allowed kya jata hai jab tak the wild animals are not facing disturbance. So everything is maintained under social sanctuaries. The third one is biosphere reserve. Biosphere reserve mein kya hota hai? Okay, there are 18 biosphere reserve in India. So how you explain biosphere reserve? Biosphere reserve is the place where the human being can control the human being. You can say the conserve the wildlife with the help of human being. So if you see this is a diagram, I uh, draw it just to clear you that how the biosphere uh, reserve is classified. The, third, the bigger circle you can say are transitional zone. And the, uh, the middle one is core zone and in between the transition and core is a buffer zone. I'll explain the core zone. Core zone is a zone hota hai which is protected one. Jaha pe there is no uh, activities allowed it. Yani ki ye protected, very protective zone hota hai. Second, if you say the buffer zone. Buffer zone mein kya relaxation diya jata hai means buffer zone mein you have a relaxation to do research work. Education park. ये दोनों आप इस एरिया में कर सकते हो। 
And the third one is transitional zone, जहाँ पे draw small house, human settlement भी है, यहाँ पे आप agriculture कर सकते हो, यहाँ पे आप fisheries कर सकते हो, और etc. जो भी human being activity है, you can do all these activities in the transition transitional zone. So this is how we have a biosphere reserve. You can explain it. So biosphere reserve में demarcation इसलिए नहीं होता. Again, this is of we need a very large space like 500 square kilometers में हमें area चाहिए होता है. That's why we are not able to demarcate or mark the biosphere reserve. This is how I complete the in situ chapter. Now come to the ex situ conservation. Ex situ conservation में क्या होता है जना? Conservation of organism, plants or animal outside their habitat. अपने घर में नहीं आप अपने घर से बाहर लेके आ के उनको हमने संभाल के रखना है उनको हमने प्रिजर्व करना है तो हम कैसे करेंगे एक सीटू में हमने डिवाइड किया दो चीजों में ब्रांचेस में फर्स्ट में हम करेंगे बुटानिकल गार्डन जोलॉजिकल पार्क एंड एक्वेरियम तो बुटानिकल गार्डन होता क्या है यहाँ पे हमने बहुत सारे प्लांट स्पीशीज को रखा होता है फ्लावर को फ्लोरिकल्चर वहाँ होता है उसमें हॉर्टिकल्चर के भी वो होते हैं डेकोरेटिव प्लांट्स भी का रखा होता है तो इसमें हम क्या करते हैं दिस डेस पीपल कीप द एक्सोटिक स्पीशीज फॉर आर रिसर्च वर्क इन अ बोटैनिकल गार्डन सो दिस इज हाउ वी प्रिजर्व द वाइल्ड एनिमल इन अंडर कंट्रोल मैन सेकेंड इज जोलॉजिकल पार्क जोलॉजिकल पार्क पार्क में क्या होता है जो भी इंडियन जो स्पीशीज होती है इन डेंजर स्पीशीज होते हैं उसको हमने ह्यूमन बीइंग के कंट्रोल में रखना है एंड देन उसको ब्रीड करके उसके पापुलेशन को प्रिजर्व करके रखना है। फॉर एग्जांपल इन ज़ू इन ज़ोलॉजिकल पार्क इन डेंजर स्पीशीज आर कैप कैप्टिव ब्रीडिंग प्रोसेस इस गोइंग ऑन सो दैट देयर पापुलेशन रिलीज़ बैक टू द नेचुर and last is aquarium. Aquarium में हम क्या करते हैं कि aquatic species को हम aquarium under control human human being के under control में रखे उसको preserve कर जाता है specially for the research purpose. Okay, next is our gene bank, seed bank, cryo preservation and captive breeding. Genes bank में क्या होता है? As I told you that genetic variability is preserved by gene bank. Under normal condition, this uh, gene bank are cold storage. Cold storage where genes bank are kept under control, temperature and humidity. This gene bank is an important way of preserving genetic resources. Important way to preserve genetic resources second one is seed bank this is again a cold storage where seeds are kept under control temperature and humidity for the storage and this is the easiest way to store germplasm of plant and the third one is chiral preservation Cryo preservation means uh, preservation of biotic plants. The biotic plants are under control at a very low temperature of minus 196 degrees Celsius in liquid nitrogen. This is how we preserve the biotic plant for conservation measure in an ex situ one. And the fourth one is captive breeding. Captive breeding का मतलब क्या होता है? Means the animals, the plants and the animals which are in the endangered list are kept in under control and their breeding is under control. So what happens? The endangered species are bred in the zoological park and then they are released into their natural habitat. This is how we conserve the biodiversity in a different level. So student, this is how I complete our unique unit that is a biodiversity conservation. Thank you very much.